Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today, we're talking head gaskets. So, like I said, today we're talking about failing head gaskets, specifically on the 2.5 five-cylinder, one, two, three, four, five engine. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsche Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, incredible pricing, a ton of really great DIY videos, so check them out at shopdap.com. Like always, we start with talking about what the heck is a head gasket? You've probably heard this term before, but it's just one of those weird automotive terms that a lot of people have heard but really don't understand. What the head gasket does is seal the bottom end where the crankshaft and pistons live to the top end where the valves live and possibly the camshafts. And it's a gasket, so it seals things. It seals combustion in these holes. It seals oil and it seals coolant. Not only does it seal them from leaking out of the gasket, it seals them from leaking between each other as well. It could be said that this is one of the most important gaskets on a combustion engine. And that goes for gasoline as well as diesel. So how do they fail? Well, basically what's gonna happen is the gasket at some point is gonna crack. This one had a tiny, tiny, tiny crack right here on cylinder one, and it was actually leaking coolant into the cylinder. I pressurized the cooling system and took the spark plug out and you could actually see coolant spraying into the cylinder. So basically if a head gasket has failed, it's leaking one of the things, coolant, oil, or compression that it's supposed to be sealing. What are some symptoms of a failing head gasket we might see? Well, there's actually a lot of them. Like I mentioned, this one was leaking coolant into the engine. So not only did that cause a loss of coolant, but it also caused white smoke out of the exhaust. You could also have oil leaking into a cylinder and that would cause a blue smoke out of the exhaust. You could have an external leak of oil, of coolant, or of compression. You can have an overheat condition. You can have a misfire. There's a lot of symptoms that can relate back to a head gasket failure. So that makes us ask the question, how do we diagnose a leaking head gasket? The first thing we're gonna do is have a visual inspection. If we're low on coolant, we're gonna look for coolant leaks. If we're low on oil, we're gonna look for oil leaks. We're also going to look for intermixing of the fluids. We're gonna look for oil in the coolant, and like this one, we're gonna look for coolant in the oil. We can do a cylinder leak down test where we pressurize the cylinder and see if we have air coming out of either the coolant or the oil, or even leaking compression into another cylinder. They make testers for cooling systems to see if there's any exhaust gas coming through the cooling system and bubbling out. So because there's a lot of ways a head gasket can fail, there's a lot of potential checks that we have to do. Now, I will say this used to be a very commonly incorrect diagnosed part. We would get 1.8 turbos and 2 liter non-turbos in all the time. People would be complaining about head gaskets, and it would turn out that it wasn't the head gasket leaking, it was actually the coolant flange right below the head gasket. So if the head gasket was here, it would be leaking coolant right below it. And luckily for the customer, most of the time that diagnosis was wrong, and it was just a coolant flange leaking, not a head gasket. Now, is this a DIY part? Well, this is gonna be a big job. You're going to be taking the intake off. You're gonna be taking the exhaust off. You're going to be removing the cylinder head. And odds are, especially if the vehicle is overheated, we're gonna to wanna to check the cylinder head and the block and make sure that neither one are warped. If it's an aluminum cylinder head or an alumina block, that becomes even more critical. I would say for the average DIYer, the person that's gonna change their own oil and replace their air filter and maybe their brakes, this is probably not a DIY job for you. This may require special tools. In addition, it's a lot of work and can be very messy. You're draining all the engine coolant, you're draining all the engine oil, so you're going to end up with a lot of chemicals that need to be disposed of. Now on other makes and models, doing a head gasket may not be that big of a deal, but on a four cylinder or really any Volkswagen engine, really most cars that are overhead cammed engines, this is going to be a bigger job and not something that the average DIYer really wants to tackle. But in all that, I have really good news. In 12 years, this gasket is the very first leaking cylinder head gasket that I have ever replaced. So it is not a common failure. It does happen. I've talked to some other Volkswagen techs that say they have replaced these parts from time to time for things like leaking coolant into a cylinder or leaking oil. But again, it's very, very, very 
Very rare. Uh, really, the most common one I think that I can remember in the history of my career is the, I'm, I'm pointing to my, my GTI or my cabbie right here, is the uh, Mark III VR6 engine, the AAA engine code VR6. That was actually a paper gasket, whereas these are metal and also have sealant embedded into the gasket. So they used to be a more common failure. That was a little bit before my time, but now it's a really shocking thing when we find out that a head gasket was leaking. Like I said, in 12 years, this is the only one that I have ever replaced. So luckily, this is not a common failure. And remember, if you do decide to DIY this job, there's a lot of other gaskets that you're gonna wanna replace. Any coolant gaskets, any intake gaskets or throttle body gaskets are gonna need to be replaced as well as exhaust gaskets. You also always wanna make sure that you replace the cylinder head bolts because on most engines, they are torque to yield, which means you torque them, then you tighten them a little bit more and the bolt will actually stretch. And while that properly seals the head, it makes them a one-time use bolt. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you guys have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. This is where the timing chain lives. So one, two, three, four, five. And a time to